Welcome back to Economic Outlook. Today I want to continue my discussion of mortgage-backed securities by taking a more detailed look at their derivative instruments, collateralized debt obligations. Mortgage-backed securities became a logical home for investors who sought to capture some of the returns on the housing market's increasing value. Mortgage-backed securities were an especially enticing investment because of their derivative products, collateralized debt obligations. CDOs gave investors the ability to pool diverse bundles of mortgages into different tranches, or risk levels. Structured finance professionals could take a single mortgage pool and build a portfolio of derivative securities, each with an appropriate expected return relative to its risk level. During the bubble, a typical mortgage pool would hold loans of varying quality. A single pool would contain prime, fixed rate loans, and the most risky subprime variable rate offerings. The aggregate level of risk for the entire pool was higher than that of the best prime mortgages it contained, and conversely, customers with adjustable rate loans had a higher likelihood of default than the pool as a whole. CDOs allowed the holders of mortgage-backed securities to subdivide the portfolio into tranches and sell derivative products risk with risk-appropriate pricing. A, hypo a hypothetical set of CDOs might include senior secured debt with an expected return of 6%, mezzanine debt with an expected return of 10%, and the lowest level, unsecured debt, with a higher expected return of 13%. Investors who purchase CDOs would receive a return commensurate with the tranche's risk level. Senior secured had the lowest credit risk and lowest yield, while unsecured debt had the highest credit risk and the highest yield. From a structural standpoint, CDOs use a system of payment distribution to create each tranche's individual risk profile. Senior secured debt is paid first. Unsecured debt is paid last. Lower tranches cannot receive their portion of the monthly payment from the original mortgage-backed security until the higher tiers have received their full payments. This system of payments creates the credit risk for each tranche. Holders of lower tranches are compensated for the chance they may not receive payment by receiving a higher yield. This payment schedule and yield distribution creates a unique risk profile for each tranche. Independent agencies assign debt ratings to individual tranches. Therefore, it is possible to create a AAA senior secured offering from even the most lackluster mortgage pool through payment assignments and yield distribution. The creation of derivative CDOs increased demand for mortgage-backed securities, which in turn fueled more lending. Unfortunately, the structure of CDOs made them especially vulnerable when the housing bubble finally burst. The bubble model of mortgage generation is known as originate to distribute. Banks and brokers originated mortgage loans and captured transaction fees while distributing risk to investors in mortgage-backed securities. These investors distributed collateralized debt obligations of varying quality with independent debt ratings and payment schemes. This system created a self-feeding cycle which ultimately imploded and exposed the faulty rating and pricing of mortgage-backed securities and their collateralized debt obligation derivatives. This ultimately cost investors hundreds of billions of dollars. The system works as long as mortgage-backed securities are priced appropriate to their risk level. Unfortunately, the bubble in housing prices coincided with lax lending practices, which badly overvalued the underlying mortgage-backed securities relative to their risk of default. Poor underwriting standards and a lack of scrutiny for automated lending gave brokers and borrowers ample opportunity for fraud. The lack of oversight also encouraged homeowners to make poor decisions borrow too much money, and speculate on housing prices. Lenders loan money too freely and did little to examine whether or not borrowers would actually be able to repay their loans. Once home prices reached a plateau, customers began to default on their loan payments. Subprime borrowers who had purchased adjustable rate mortgages were unable to refinance when their rates reset or teaser periods expired. Borrowers who had interest-only loans or put too little money down 
saw their monthly payments increase far beyond their means to pay. Over-leveraged homeowners began to default on payments and enter foreclosure. As borrowers defaulted, the pass-through payments to mortgage-backed securities declined. This caused a domino effect. Mortgage-backed securities lost value as their underlying collateral, people's homes, became less valuable. Their derivative securities declined as well. In theory, non-payments should have been absorbed by the lower tranches with poor debt ratings. However, defaults became so widespread that collateralized debt obligation issuers could not make payments for mezzanine or senior secured tranches. The CDO market collapsed along with the value of mortgage-backed securities. There is ample blame to share for the fall of CDO products. First, the value of higher tranches did not accurately reflect the true risk of non-payment from the underlying security. This failure lies with the originators of the CDO products themselves and with the original mortgage distributors who made dangerous loans with little hope of repayment in a down market. Rating agencies are also at fault. CDO issuers created senior secured offerings from pools of subprime mortgages. A more judicious analysis of the underlying securities should have resulted in lower debt ratings for even the highest tranches. Rating agencies ignored the poor lending practices inherent in the mortgage pools themselves. They also failed to accurately assess the likelihood that the domestic housing market would enter a, subs a sustained downturn. Unfortunately for investors, rating agencies ignored a clear conflict of interest. Agencies were paid by investment banks who sold the rated securities. By the time agencies lowered ratings to reflect economic reality, it was far too little too late. The investment banks which were instrumental in creating a market for collateralized debt obligations were also complicit in creating a system which collapsed. Investors and executives bought and sold products which they did not fully understand. More importantly, dealers and executives were compensated on a per-transaction basis. Therefore, bonus payments were made based on the number of contracts bought and sold, not the quality of the products themselves. Many executives and dealers took on far too much short-term leverage without taking into account the future financial health of the firm itself or markets as a whole. Ultimately, lax regulation, government policy, consumer greed, and the Federal Reserve's interest rate posture are also guilty in helping create a culture which rewarded short-term transactions to the detriment of adequate risk management. All of these topics are explained in depth elsewhere, so I would refer you to other sources if you're interested about more information. The G20 best summarized the situation succinctly. They said, during a period of strong global growth, growing capital flows, and prolonged stability earlier this decade, market participants sought higher yields without an adequate appreciation of the risks and failed to exercise proper due diligence. At the same time, weak underwriting standards unsound risk management practices, increasingly complex and opaque financial products, and consequent excessive leverage combined to create vulnerabilities in the system. Policymakers, regulators, and supervisors in some advanced countries did not adequately appreciate and address the risks building up in financial markets, keep pace with financial innovations, or take into account the systemic ramifications of domestic regulatory actions. I hope you've enjoyed this look at mortgage-backed securities and collateralized debt obligations. I'll see you here again next week at Economic Outlook, and be sure to check out my website, www.econoutlook.com. Thanks as always.